Hi everyone, Donut here, and today I'm gonna to be making gumbo for the first time ever. This is a recipe I got from a, a person who frequents my stream. His name is T-Gug, you may have seen him there, but he was a professional chef, and his roommate, who is also a professional chef, gave him this recipe, and she was born and raised in New Orleans, so it seems like a pretty good recipe. There's also gonna be a little bit of another person's recipe, uh, Chef Isaac Toop. You can find him on uh, Munchie's episode where he makes gumbo. He was born and raised in New Orleans as well, and he's a professional chef, so I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle a little bit of his recipe into this. And again, this is my first time making this, and I wasn't born and raised in New Orleans, so if there's any Creole people out there who are gonna get mad at me in the comments, I probably deserve it. To get started, from what I understand, you wanna have everything completely chopped and ready before you even start making the roux, which is super easy to screw up. Squirt just opened the pantry. He's a magician. Hey Squirt, Squirt's hurt right now. His eyes messed up. I'm gonna take him to the vet tomorrow. Hey Squirt. No, look at the baby's eye. Squirt. T-Gug's recipe calls for one cup of celery, one cup green bell pepper, two cups of onion, four cloves of garlic. And that's for all the vegetables to get it started. Yes, I still do not have a cutting board. Why I do not, I can't tell you. Two cup onion, one cup bell pepper. Two cups recipe calls for four cloves of fresh garlic, but I have five. And it's messed. One thing I'm gonna deviate from T-Gug's recipe on is Chef Toop's recipe. I'm gonna add a jalapeno just because it sounds good. All right, we're gonna throw the chicken in the oven on broil just to sear those really, really good. t Gug's recipe calls for six quarts of chicken stock, which is 12 cups of water. He said three quarts is used for the, uh, the gumbo to start it off with, and then the other three quarts you put in there as needed as you're simmering it. Of course, we're gonna use better than bouillon for the chicken stock because it's by far the best chicken stock I've ever had. I went ahead and used half the jar because it's a lot of water and I can just save the leftover stock for later since I cook with it all the time. One last thing we need to prepare is the sausage. Uh, from what I understand, you're supposed to use andouille sausage, but if you don't have andouille sausage, you can use pretty much any smoked sausage. Fortunately for us, we have some pecan smoked andouille sa sausage, small batch sausage from a place called Holmes Smokehouse. Number one in, voted number one in taste by the Houston Chronicle. So this looks really good. Oh shit. <laughs> Do you like my sausage? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got me some pizza. Wait until long. Um, well, we didn't get us some pizza. We're gonna make our own pizza. I'm yeah, gonna make one. Guys, if you ever get a chance to get some of this, it's incredible. Now comes the hard part where I can't step away from the oven for I think about what 30 minutes 30 to 45 minutes because we're it's got to be the color of, uh, of of Light chocolate melted light chocolate the roux what I'm gonna do now is use a cup of flour to a cup of canola oil That's what t Gug's recipe calls for a cup of oil To a cup of flour and t Gug's recipe says you slowly sprinkle in the flour while whisking and You can't walk away from this or if it's the, the root just messes up. You have to constantly stir it until you get the color that you want. Yeah, they're open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Chicken is done, I flipped it about halfway through. I have no idea how long I had it in there. I think it was about 20 to 25 minutes. Now I'm gonna do something that I saw Chef Toop do that looked really, really, really good. While it's still hot, we're gonna deglaze it with some alcohol. And of course we're using yingling.
We're getting there. We're getting there. The alcohol has been cooking off of that and it's been deglazing for about five minutes now. It's looking really, really good. I'm probably gonna take that out, take the chicken out, cut it up, put it back in there, and we're gonna wait for this to darken up a little bit more, then we're gonna add the vegetables. Oh, I think that that's the desired color we're going for. So we're going to transfer it to the pot that we're going to be actually cooking the gumbo in. And then we're going to add the veggies. So that got really dark really quick. Yeah, it did. Like after, after about 30 to 45 minutes of stirring it up. Transferring it into the pot that we're going to be cooking with. Oh, there's a lot of scrapings I need to get. We're going to add the vegetables. Oh my goodness. I think that's what it's supposed to look like. Oh my goodness. The onions are getting translucent, so we're gonna go ahead and put the garlic in. Maybe just a tiny bit more, because you were under on like two of them. All right, so that's six cups, which is half of the chicken stock that we made. We're hungry, so we're adding everything now. Burned. It's just a dark room. Yeah. So I'm putting in parsley, thyme, and Chef Toot used five bay leaves. Poor squirt, look at him. Squirt. Oh no, buddy. Now we're gonna add our gate. <laughs> what if you made a roux out of gate? Gee. Oh, what if you made a roux out oh my of god. What if you made that? <laughs> like a teaspoon of thyme, teaspoon of parsley. Five bay leaves, five bay leaves. One, two, three, four, five. And of course you don't want to eat those when it's done. Bay leaves are not good for you. Don't they make you sick? I don't know, they you taste like <laughs> Yeah, you can't, you can't eat bay leaves. If you accidentally chew on them, they don't taste very good. You can always add more salt later, but you can't take it away. Like that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we had the extra chicken stock. We added another cup to it, and it's got a bite to it. It, it kind, it's almost got like a coffee bite to it. I really like. I, I kind, I'm kind of glad we did it this way that we have the dark roux. And I looked it up online, and it, it seems like that's a pretty common thing to have a really dark roux. So I don't think we screwed it up. It tastes good. We taste it. Can't wait for all those spices and herbs and just every everything to, to mix together the next three hours and cook and. Oh, it's gonna be good. I think it's gonna be really good. Did you make your own dinner tonight? Yes, and there's 10 more seconds for it to be in the oven. What'd you make? I made a pizza. Pizza from scratch, pizza. huh? Pizza, yeah, pizza. Sweet, man. All right, it's done. It's done, let's look at it. Oh my God, look at that pizza that you made from scratch. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Oh man, we're gonna go get that checked out tomorrow. I'm sorry, buddy. I made my pizza and mm -hmm. all of us are eating it because of our three hours they made of food. Oh no, we gotta wait three hours, for the, at least three hours for this to simmer according to Teagog. And I have to say that Chef John's pizza is amazing. And it's really cheesy. It's really cheesy. You gotta add a lot of cheese for oh a homemade God. one. You gotta add at least, you gotta add at least. Poor squirt. You gotta add the, if you're making your own homemade pizza, you need to add at least one whole bag of what kind of cheese was it? Cheddar? Mozzarella. Mozzarella. One bag of mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Mozzarella. Mozzarella. One bag. Of it. Uh huh. We ended up adding a, another cup of chicken stock to it before we started the simmering process, and it's been on here for about an hour now, and it's smelling incredible. It's starting to uh, thicken up a little bit too, so I don't know, maybe I'll give it a little bit longer and I might add a little bit more chicken stock. We're about 30 minutes away from it being simmered for three hours. 
It smells amazing. It looks amazing. I can't wait. Oh, and also, Dan and Bucky's Bacon Jalapeno Butter One Minute Dry Rub is amazing on popcorn. Sausage first, or you're just gonna. I said, Fuck yeah. Okay. So, like a, a sausage and the. Oh, were you just eating a sausage first? I don't know. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of everything. Ready? Is it too hot? A little hot. Oh, hot. oh. <laughs> They're so hot. Why would you do that? <laughs> Ow. I think it tastes good, but I can't tell. Why did we do that? <laughs> we should have blown on it a little bit more. <laughs> now my mouth is bleeding. <laughs> I was so excited about it. We just jumped right into it. Now we're not going to be able to taste anything. God damn it. Let's just put it back in the pot and eat it tomorrow. <laughs> that was too hot. <laughs> we're stupid. I burned my tongue. I'm just gonna pour it back into the pot and we'll eat it tomorrow when no. it's better. Supposedly when you eat gumbo the next day, it's better. All right, I know you're in a hurry to eat your gumbo because you've cooked it for five hours straight. Yeah. But um, don't don't burn the <laughs> shit out of yourself. So we're gonna we're gonna give it another minute before we before we eat it. That is very good. I think that's real gumbo. Yeah. I think you're right. Damn, that worked. We didn't ruin it after all. Mm -mm. It's got that good little bite to it. Like, I don't wanna say burned, but like very, very browned. <laughs> I love you. I love you. This came out good. Mm -hmm. Worth the wait. Oh, it's only 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just 11 o'clock here. We're gonna finish our food. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. And seeing my completely cannibalized, torn apart gumbo recipe from a few different chefs from New Orleans. But it came out really, really good. It's really, really freaking good. So, everybody, please have a fantastic day. <laughs>